This video was sponsored by CuriosityStream in partnership with my streaming service, Nebula. Hey, happy Friday. This week I'll talk about Apple completely outsmarting Epic. I'll talk about Oppo releasing a really interesting looking rollable display smartphone concept. And I'll also talk about Honor, the smartphone brand being sold off to the weirdest possible buyers. As always, we also have a brand new tech knowledge quiz that is linked down in the description. So check that out if you'd like to test your tech knowledge and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my pick of the week will be Apple dropping its famous 30% App Store commission down to 15% for developers who earn less than $1 million a year on the App Store. Which is great, but also kind of a perfect evil master plan move. Let me explain. So you've probably heard by now about the 30% Apple tax that allows the company to earn around $15 billion a year just from the App Store alone. Most of which it gets to keep for itself as profit. And you might have also heard that this year, a ton of developers have decided that, you know what, maybe that's just too much, especially when standard payment providers like Stripe usually charge like two to 3% and actually let app makers have a direct billing relationship with their customers, unlike Apple. So they decided to fight. They formed a coalition led by Epic Games, launched lawsuits and a huge publicity campaign claiming that they are oppressed. And Apple came back with the perfect clapback. Basically a huge middle finger to companies like Epic. They announced that they were cutting the commission rates of developers earning less than a million dollars down to 15%, which is genius in so many ways. First, obviously that doesn't include Epic. Second, it's barely gonna cost Apple anything because even though according to Sensor Tower, 98% of developers fall into that category, their combined revenues only add up to about 5% of what Apple makes from the App Store. So at most, Apple is gonna lose 2.5% of its App Store revenues with this. And third, the discount isn't automatic. You have to apply for it and Apple has to approve your company. So you bet that those 98% will suddenly become awfully supportive of Apple to avoid poking the bear and being denied their discounts. And voila, without giving up pretty much anything, I mean, they didn't give up any substantial amount of revenue or the billing relationship to their customers, they have basically won. They can now paint themselves as the good guys who are helping out the small companies and they can paint the others, the Epics and the Spotify's of the world, they can paint those as the greedy big businesses who just can't get enough. I have already started seeing a ton of comment sections online turning against Apple for exactly this reason and you bet that Apple will be trying to leverage this in antitrust hearings as well. Of course the real injustices, like how Apple directly competes against services like Spotify, charges them 30% while it doesn't charge their own services that, and gives itself constant unfair advantages like advertising in notifications which is against its own policies, are not addressed in this. So I'm sure the fight will continue but Apple did just win a big part of it. Okay, my win of the week will be the Oppo X 2021, a concept phone with a rollable display that Oppo announced at their Inno Day conference earlier this week. The first phone we have seen with a very similar form factor earlier this year was from TCL, but while they only really showed some renders and a dummy unit that honestly looked a little janky, this model from Oppo looked significantly more polished. This one has two motors, one on each side, a clever comb-like metal structure that unfolds to support the screen when unrolled, and a special ultra-thin screen laminate they call Warp Track that tries to make sure that the screen doesn't become kind of floppy from all the rolling. And Oppo actually let a bunch of people go hands-on with it at the event in China, and based on their videos, the mechanism seems surprisingly solid, and the screen looks pretty even and stable. And while the name implies that Oppo is planning to bring this to market sometime next year, the company hasn't actually committed to a real release date yet. But seeing how much progress there has been from TCL's first concept just eight months ago, and seeing how LG has teased an actual rollable phone that we might actually be able to purchase in March next year, it looks like this form factor might not be that far off after all. Now while the rollable form factor does seem to solve a couple of really big issues that we have with foldables, like for example the big crease that is here in the middle, or just the thickness of these devices, it also creates a bunch of problems on its own. For example, the soft plastic screen that is protected here inside the device, on rollables that will be on the outside, and I don't quite know how you'll be able to protect this meaningfully, so we'll just have to wait and see. 
Okay, and my fail of the week will be that Honor, the smartphone brand, was finally sold off by Huawei, but to the weirdest possible set of buyers. So this is the official joint statement that was put out around the purchase, and upon reading it, I just couldn't wrap my head around this list. It's a consortium of 30 different entities, the first of which is Shenzhen Smart City Development Group Co. Limited. I looked it up online, and that's a company 100% owned by an agency of the Shenzhen government. In other words, it's a state-owned company, and this is rumored to be the largest shareholder of the bunch. The whole point of selling off Honor was to save it from all the sanctions that the United States government has placed on Huawei, but by selling it to a essentially state-owned entity, I don't quite understand how that would work, unless they think that the United States government would either be too stupid or maybe just too preoccupied and busy to notice and realize. Which I guess isn't like a completely unreasonable thought, it might happen, but it's a pretty weird strategy regardless. And the other 30 plus investors are supposedly various distributors of Honor phones, which I, again, just don't understand. If these are all distributing the same phones, then they must be each other's biggest competitors. How could they run a company together when none of their business incentives are aligned? I don't understand this move. Anyway, you might have noticed that yes indeed I have a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. I actually managed to find this one for about 1,100 euros brand new and kind of uncharacteristically of me I'm actually gonna do a review of this because I find it so exciting. It's gonna be over on TechAltar and the first place you can see that review will be Nebula. Nebula is a beautiful video streaming service built and owned by me and the bunch of the internet's best educational content creators like Real Engineering, Low Spec Gamer, Wendover Productions, Renee Ritchie, Polymatter and more. And yes, check out our videos usually drop there at least a day early and without ads, of course. All of our regular YouTube content is on the platform too, and Nebula is also filled with great originals. Tom Scott's fantastic series called Money, for example, is a hilarious game show that he developed specifically for this service, where he pits YouTubers against each other and makes them backstab each other over money. Story Mode from Lessons from the Screenplay analyzes video games as if they were movies, and Tier Zoo's Let's Play Outside series discusses zoo topics as if animals were playable video game characters. Nebula has no ads, no tracking and no recommendation algorithm, so you can decide what content you want to watch and just watch that and we can just make content for you without having to worry about demonetization and stuff. Best of all, access to Nebula comes for free with a subscription to my sponsor CuriosityStream, which itself is 26% off right now. So you get both services for just over a dollar a month. CuriosityStream is of course the the premier place on the internet for high quality professional documentaries from the founders of the Discovery Channel and they have a huge library of science, nature and history content to binge while you are stuck at home. I have recently finished watching Cyber War on CuriosityStream, which is a documentary on hackers and governments doing nasty things, because apparently that's just the world we live in right now. And there's tons of other great content here from hosts like David Attenborough, Jane Goodall, Stephen Hawking and more. So check them out at the link in the description and I'll see you next week.